Show, hosted by State Director Sammy Esposito, Associate Scouts Drew Stewart and Sean Smith, that discuss all things related to amateur baseball in South Carolina. Here are your hosts. Welcome in to episode 75 of the Palmetto Dugout Show. We are now on our first live podcast. Coach Espo, what's up? Coach, what's happening? Are we doing all right today? I guess this uh, we, we really got to be uh, very conscious of our um, language for our first live episode here in the great Palmetto State. Um, no editing, no no editing involved in this one. So we're uh, we don't have to have Austin um, giving us the thumbs down to start this thing off because we don't have his name cranked off in this thing. So. But you know what? What are we going to do? He's he's living the high life right now on a beach somewhere, starting off his uh, spring break. As as we like, we're acting like he's a a high school or a college kid right now. Hey, he's living the life, unlike some of us. Um, he's yeah. down there with uh, Rafiki on the island. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he he left at a sharp five thirty a.m. this morning. Um, hey, the, <laughs> here we're, we're live on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. The only comments I can currently see um, are, are those Instagram comments. So if you have a comment, chime in. We'll see if we get to you. Um, but we'll, we'll get to the business side um, of the business. Coach, big things rolling out throughout the week, right? Yeah, a lot, a lot of things cracking. We're going we're gonna to start us off this week with our first uh, pitcher and player of the weeks that are, uh, that are going to start off going on Tuesday. We'll get our, our pitcher and player of the week. We'll go out Tuesday. Those – Nominations have been sent out to the high school coaches this last week. Um, we've also sent out a bunch of stuff on social media. So coaches that are out there that have gotten the emails, that have seen this stuff on social media, we've gotten a bunch of nominations that have come in already, but but nominate your guys, right? We're trying to to, to give as, as much love to the players out there that have that have helped the programs out there and try to try to promote those guys the best we can. So we'll get and and right, we've had some tough ones already that have come in. We've had, we've had no hitters. We've had guys with some some big time performances already come in. On Tuesday, we'll roll that out, and then on Wednesday, we'll have our diamond notes. Or in essence, the diamond notes are going to come in guys that did not get that pitcher or player of the week. So maybe if you were, you know, you just missed out on that, we're going to roll that content that's going to go out to so kind of that next tier of guys that had outstanding performances. That'll go in there, and then every Thursday we're going to keep rolling out that heat sheet. Um, you know, I, I, our initial heat sheet was, uh, whoo, boy, whoo, fire, yeah. or or as the kids call it, like my my eleven year old I hear all the time that thing was bussing. Um, so it was, uh, it was, <laughs> it was, it was fire with with it going out there. So, and then obviously we're still rolling with the spotlights. You know, getting four of those out every week, trying to highlight. Highlight the guys that, as as if if you caught on out there with our spotlights, we're going back and, and spotlighting all the guys from the preseason, all states, north and south. So spotlighting those guys with those numbers that they put up uh, over those events over the winter, all spring long. So we, you know, and and then on top of that, we got the content rolling out from our high school coverage that we got going on. And then I think, hold up, what time is it right now? Seven oh three. Here Seven oh three. Fifty-seven minutes. We're about to drop something else that's about to go uh, out at eight, eight o'clock tonight. So, uh oh, uh oh, coach, coach, little all tournament team from uh, the shipyard, Woo. Woo. coming in hot. All tournament teams, all three teams coming in hot. So, it'll hey, be we, big. We we do have a comment. Sean Smith says I need a haircut. I wish Sean Smith would get out of our <laughs> lives at this point. I um, understand he's part of the the pre-show, but we need you out of our life, Sean. Uh, but if anyone's uh wanting to give me a free haircut i'm down um <laughs> We're, we can be sponsored by great clips sports clips you know i mean any of the clips you know with sponsors i mean i feel like them. i've been to uh, eight clemson games and i've yet to be picked for a row of the the game for great clips so um <laughs> that's why i hadn't got a haircut sean um player of the week's coach what 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 do we need good i mean hey Fill out, fill out the form, right? All it is is a, it's a pretty simple Google form. You know, the coaches have all gotten the email. If you have not received the email, coaches, and you're going, hey, I, I've checked my email, I've checked my inbox, it's not in there. We've also attached in the in the link on social media that we put out there. You can click the link. It'll take you right to that Google form, and you can fill it out and, and hit submit, and it comes right in there and, and goes to it. Um, 
if for some reason you want to do it the old fashioned way and go through email and you're not getting that email, shoot me a text. If you have my number, you have your number, shoot you a text, or you can DM us, you know, message us on, on social media or, or shoot us an email and we'll get that to you right away. You know, those things are fun for us because we can kind of look back at the week that was and see these outstanding performances, but it also allows us to, to highlight the individual player, but also kind of individual, you know, highlight the, the, the schools as well. You know, the, the teams and the players that, that had these performances over the week and allow them to, uh, to kind of get their, uh, their press, get their due. Hey, players, um, if you feel like you had a, a, a week, <laughs> tell your coaches to submit you in. Um, and, hey, and- Monday, by Monday at noon. We need it by noon. Monday at noon. I get, we get it. High school coaches are busy, right? They're also trying to teach. Some of them are trying to teach maybe a physics class, a history class. A lot of them are rolling out the ball in PE. I get it. Um, a lot of them are, are busy. They got families. They got a lot of things going on. They also got to cut the grass. They got to line the field. They got a lot, of, a lot of busy things going on. But, you know, it, it, it's not going to take, take much time. We don't need an extravagant in-depth thing. We just need, you know, the kind of the nuts and bolts of the stats of who they are, the year, you know, kind of what that is. And, and the Google form is not a long, elaborate form. Kind of who they are, the school, you know, the grad year, and, and kind of the stats that went with it. And, and we'll get that stuff out there. But we've gotten, we've gotten some pretty good ones that have come in. And, and I mean, it's going to be some, some tough ones to see who wins those this week because we've got some big-time performers that have already come in. And, you know, we kind of wait a couple weeks. We could have we went off the cuff already, but we know some teams hadn't started already. Some, you know, some have played, heck, probably six to eight games already, and some have just cranked up. So we kind of wait a couple weeks and let them make sure everybody gets going. So we'll get this first one rolling on Tuesday and, and obviously some big-time performances already. But So we're fired up to get that rolling. Can't wait to see it, Coach. Um, and you kind of elaborate here um, with with stuff you people need to do. Um, and we'll, we'll wrap it into the bomb squad of the week. Um, if you hit a bomb, it's hashtag PBSC Bomb Squad, um, and it could be featured a part of ep- of any episode in the Palmetto Dugout Show. And that bomb squad of the week goes to Bennett Edwards, twenty twenty four catcher for Lawrence, um, going to. Because you can't remember. Is he going down to Statesboro? Beautiful <laughs> Statesboro. Heading uh-huh. on down to Statesboro, boy. Heading on down to Statesboro for old Coach Hennon down there. He'll be able to hit a few more, a few more bombs down there. He had two in that game in the IP Classic. Um, so bomb squad of the week will we'll go to him. We know there was a lot of bombs throughout the week. We look forward to seeing more bombs. Um, usually you're going to be picked if it's a, a ball that lands 480 feet outside of the park. Uh, <laughs> Or it's a big walk-off bomb, and we know Austin got to see one previously. Who knows? Um, we didn't get to see any at the shipyard, but on the coverage side, Coach, between me and you, we've got five games this week. Five games. We've got a lot of action going on. A lot of action. We had 120-plus tweets in four days. Four days. Coach, you know, it was, it no one was else good better. to – it was good to take a few days off of the the, the tweeting last week, um, oh, yes. Because it was a, it was a lot of action getting getting some of those tweets out from from the weekend between right between myself between you, Blake and Austin, and I'll probably put more of the onus on you, Blake and Austin, <laughs> <laughs> of, getting, of getting the tweets out there. Um, but I mean, obviously, kudos to you guys. I mean, right. Shipyard, obviously, first and foremost wow. for us, right? I mean, uh, an incredible, obviously, venue, right? We didn't, we didn't skip a beat, right? Moved the games up a little bit. Tremendous facility, right? Second to none out there. Facility's phenomenal. Jason Murray and his crew, great job. Eddie T, Captain Eddie with tournaments. Captain Eddie. PB coming down. PB tournaments coming down there, running a phenomenal tournament as always down there. But, right, the venue, the food. Right, second to none. Talent, the coaches, the families, right, come down there and run it, run a great thing. And then, you know, obviously the talent. The talent was great. You know, we saw some some big time arms. We saw some big time bats. You know, and it makes it easier, right, when you're at games like that. It allows us, makes it a little bit easier to get some tweets out, right? You you, you know, you don't have any talent. It, sometimes it's a struggle. You know, because what we don't want to do is try to search to put stuff out, right? We don't want to put a guy takes a swing and. Swings and misses, and try to put something out. We want to be able to 
promote these players in the state to the best of their ability. So we want to be able to put out good content on these players to promote them up. And, and, and the players gave us great stuff to be able to put out there. And obviously we had a phenomenal championship game, you know, Ooh. with, you know, now we won't really talk about that game that was going on behind us too much with some action <laughs> going on over there, but a phenomenal championship game. But then also across the state, right? Me, yes. uh, Austin started off in Optera. I kind of traded place with him in Optera while he came down the shipyard. And then Blake started off in the IP and then Blake, drives up closer to home and gets over to the Coastal Invitational. So we're able to knock out a bunch of tournaments in the state in one weekend and, and watch a bunch of baseball and watch a bunch of great baseball players. And, you know, and also not only that, well-run tournaments across the state as well. So that's one thing I, I talk to, you know, other pieces, other guys like ourselves across the country, and that's one thing I think we're very lucky with across this state is our preseason tournaments. It, yes. We we knock out so many great baseball players, so many great baseball teams, so many great baseball tournaments in the first heck two weekends. We we joke if we're lazy, we can we can do the first two weekends. We can rest till spring break, and then we can rest till the playoffs if we really wanted to. You know, be the lazy way to go about it, but it kind of allows us to go. Hey, we've seen these guys. Now we can kind of zone into what we need to do over this time until the spring break tournaments, and then do it again in the playoffs. But it, it makes life – it helps us down this road as we kind of get into this part of the time right now to where teams are getting into region play to where we can kind of handpick games we really need to get get to see or maybe we didn't see teams early on. Yeah, no doubt. Um, and with that great two weeks of baseball comes the Power 25 yet again, and we're going to reveal the Power 25 live on Episode 75 here. Um, the Palmetto Dugout Show, Coach. A lot of changes. Um, hey, we hey, we I'm, may get some good comments here in a minute. I can't wait because hey, we got some comments last time on the social media train, and it and wasn't I, live. Hey, and it wasn't live. And some of the people that blasted us they ain't a part of the Power Twenty Five no more. Oh, so, so, <laughs> let's see if we can drum up some more some more comments here on these. So hey, before you pop off, maybe win some games. I don't know. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Coach with the dagger. Um, <laughs> if you're watching this now, you will get first dibs at the Power 25, as you'll see the story come out tomorrow. We'll dive in here. Um, 21 to 25 here. Coach, all of these teams are brand new to the Power 25. Brand new. Brand new teams. Breaking it new right here. We start out at the bottom here at 25 and 2A Mid-Carolina. Um, I think we we caught some some slack with them early in the year, um, and, and now they just won ball games, right? One ball game. We caught a little slack, you know. And and for for us with Mid Carolina, they were right there. They were, they were kind of on the bubble for us going in there. But it was a, it was a group that lost a bunch of older guys last year. That that had a really 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 good team last year. Made a run um, in the playoffs, and you know we kind of. We didn't know much about them. It's a new team, it was a, you know, a new group, and we kind of left them off. We knew they were going to be good because they're always good, but kind of left them off and kind of let it shake first couple weeks and see how it is. And big shock, here they are winning. They deserve to be in. Here they go. Coach, they're, they're, they're in. Um, they ended the year being in as well. Um, so you go up to 24 here. And West Florence making a move um, in, that, in that 3A classification. They were down – at the Coastal Invitational Tournament, so Blake got to saw him. Um, impressed with their two arms, um, and Cooper Coleman and, and Peyton Rogers, so two good arms there as well. Yeah, I was, I was going to say they got two arms up at the top. They're going to have a chance to <clears throat> to win them every single game they play, and uh, you know the the chicken fans that are out there listening are going to be fired up to see uh, see one of them coming on the campus next year. But they got two guys that'll they give them a chance to 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 win win the majority of their games right there where they're pitching. Big time. Um, and 23, Skeezer. We're in the Skeezer. Cardinal Newman, Coach. Now, we talk about arms players. They've got them. Coach, do they ever? They got one of the better arms, arm strength-wise, in, in in the state on their team. Um, <clears throat> you know, Austin Laughlin, coming out fucking 92-mile-an-hour bullets. Um, you know, he, he's he's got a chance to, to, to have a big-time year for those guys. You know, we got, we got a chance to see him early in the preseason in the scrimmage. Um here against uh, River Bluff, and they got a sophomore that's a, a mid to upper 80s arms as well, coming off a shortstop after 
playing six innings at short came over there. So Cardinal Luma's got some bats. They got some arms. They're, they're, they're a very talented team, and I, they're off to a hot start. I think, what are they, five, one, and one. So they're yes. off to a hot start, and they're going to continue on, and we'll, we'll get a chance to see them and see them multiple times throughout the year. So very talented team there, and, and not only the skis are ranks, I think they'd be a very talented team in any ranks you put them in in the, in the state this year. No doubt. Um, and then we'll go to 22 before I pop this up on the screen. Coach, it ain't easy being from easily. <laughs> <laughs> up to 22, um, not ranked previously, obviously, is easily, <clears throat> Coach. And they are soaring in at 5-0. and um, I know some, some other people had them ranked early. Um, but we know they've got some, some decent arms um, on the mound as well, and they can and swing it. Um, Coach Payne over there at Easley, he's got a decent squad this year. Got him a good team right right, right in your backyard up there. So, I, obviously, we'll get a chance to uh, – your backyard, Austin's backyard, we'll get a chance to watch them quite a bit. And it was kind of a, you know, a team – they're, they're another one like mid-Carolina. They were kind of right on that – right on the bubble, right on the outside. And, you know, you <clears throat> one of those teams that you knew they were going to be good. You know, which way they're going to go. Let's let it shake out a little bit and play a couple of weeks. And here it goes. By God, they're winning some games. And let's slot them in there and let them keep doing it. So we're we're excited, but again, it ain't easy being from Easley. So they're it's rolling. Never, it's never easy being from Easley. <laughs> <laughs> now, twenty-one. Um, I might catch a flag for this one. Um, Here we go, big shock. I'm shocked they're not number one. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have McGovern anymore, so they're not number one. Uh, <laughs> they they got a McGovern. I'm sorry, they don't. They don't <laughs> they have Jacob McGovern. McGovern. Right. Um, is the Seneca Bobcats coming in at? 21 in the power 25 coach another team that continues to win they're up to four and one they did lose to it ain't easy being from easily um but hey this is five and oh but seneca got a big win over powdersville they've got a, a good arm in cutshaw good arm and uh carson bay as well um another team that made a deep run that's continuing to improve and get better yeah, you know, this was one we had to we had to scratch and claw to keep them out of number one early on from you. Um, it, was, it was a fight to have them one and two, not having them one and two with them in Powdersville with you. But, yeah, they were uh, – yeah, they, you know, watching – you know, they big transfer. In the transfer portal we joked about with Cutchell coming in there. So, we've heard some great things about him, big-time arm strength and got some power in the bat. So I know you'll fall out of uh, bed out of class one day at school there and go be able to see them here soon. So they're winning. They're doing their thing. Big shock. Um, you won't see the McGovern on the mound. You'll see the McGovern with a bat. But um, Coach did get a picture of that. Though. <laughs> you did get a picture of him <laughs> doing some old butterfly stretches or whatever he's doing on the, on the Clemson <laughs> Tiger field today. But it, uh, big shock. Seneca keeps winning. <clears throat> I mean, when you when you live close to me, you win. Um, anyway, <laughs> up to number twenty, <laughs> yeah, coach. We had right. we had a preview show. Um, we did with with Camden, and they're up to twenty. You know? <laughs> um, they continue to win as well. They're at five and one. They beat Andrew Jackson, East Clarendon, and Dreer. They did, and you know what? You know they rolled right off a win in the football. They're just gonna roll <laughs> right quickly. into winning with baseball. I mean, it, it's it's big shot, Camden. A bunch of tough nuts over there that, that's got a good team and, and obviously well coached and guys that are just a bunch of ball players that kind of figuring it out. And, you know, he when we talked to him, he was excited about his team and, and fired up for him. And, and and obviously, you know, we can see why they're they're off to a hot start and, you know, kind of fired up to go see those guys this spring. And, and hopefully we don't jinx them with this early on bumping them in there. But I don't think so, especially the way he talked about them. We'll keep that keep that train rolling for him. We love uh, being bulletin board material for people. <laughs> um, and you move up to 19 here. Um, we stay in the 5A classification with Nation Ford. Um, they were previously 21, so they're up to 19 now. We know they've got arm strength as well. It's a very talented team. Coach, I think the the big winner of the spring so far is arm strength in our state. Um, well, we've seen a lot, according to the we, sheet. We've seen a lot, and, and NAFO is not – they're another one that keeps pumping them out, pumping them out, and and they've played some, you know, they've played in good tournaments, and they've played tough, tough teams, and and they just keep winning. But they got, they also got talented position players and, and versatile guys that can kind of do some different things. They've they've won some games where, you know, maybe they haven't pitched it quite so well, and they've had to have a slugfest, and they've done it the other way as well. So, 
talented team in a very talented area up there as well. I mean, up in that uh, that area of the state, we're gonna we're gonna Get drop some more teams up here soon. So um, NAFO, you know, they're a talented team up in a in an area that you know I don't know if you want to be up there battling out this year for for that neck of the woods. Uh, tough place to uh, play baseball up there. Um, now you look at eighteen here; mm-hmm. they got a big matchup this week. Um, who knows? Could be game of the week. Um, they're up from twenty three now to eighteen. And it's the Crescent Tigers. Um, they will take on the number 21 ranked Power 25 team, Seneca, um, in a two game set this week. Um, we know Crescent has Carson Roberts and Brody Linker on the mound, can swing it pretty well, um, performed well um, in the Palmetto Classic, and, and they've gone up um, from 23 here. So big things. Yeah, a couple of big arms kind of, you know, we talked about a little bit like a couple of those other guys. You got two arms right there that are going to give you a chance to win every game. So it'll be fun for Crescent to see see what they can do this year. But <clears throat> whether that 18 in a couple of weeks is going to keep moving up or not, we'll see. But especially with that that big matchup this week. So they're a good good quality team. And I don't know. We'll see. Game of the week. Who knows? We'll see. We'll drop with that one. Who, who Do they flip-flop? Do the Seneca Bobcats take control? Who knows? Um, and you move to 17 here. Um, caught some call, flack for this team. Caught some flack. I was about to say, I, I caught a lot of hell for this flag. one. Um, I caught a lot of hell for this one. Um, they were previously not ranked, but here they are. The Blythewood Bengals at 17 with a big showing in the Optera Solutions. And then after that, splitting a, a one and one with Lexington. Coach, you know, talking about an offensive team, I, I mean, the, the the knock on them was were they going to have enough pitching this this year, right? Everybody kind of knew they were going to be able to swing it. Did they have enough pitching? You know, they had a couple couple guys dinged up. Um, you know, Penfield out there wearing the uh, the Kobe Bryant mask, the LeBron James Bain. mask out there, Bane mask. Um, <laughs> you know, kind of. I don't know. I think he's going to. I don't know about the pitching part this year for him. We all know he's a hitter. But, you know, kind of going to be limited on the mound. What are they going to do? They're just going to outslug people, I think, is what they're going to do. they got enough guys. Sammy Franklin on the mound is going to throw a gem. You know, we got a chance to watch them last weekend. You know, what they're going to do is they're going to swing the bat, and they're going to they're gonna do that. And, they, you know, they got a bunch of big, strong, athletic guys, and they're, they're impressive. So, we, uh, I guess we owe them apology for not having them in there last time. But – now all they got to do is they just got to win. So if they lose and they get knocked out, I guess next time we do this, we can go. It's not our fault. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, Landon Penfield, get off my back. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> move to 16 here. We go to the 2A classification in Great Collegiate. Um, another talented year for Great Collegiate. They were previously at 16, so they stay at 16. God, I mean, what do uh, – Gray, all they do is win. I mean, Coach Assey, <clears throat> one of the all-time great high school coaches here in the state of South Carolina, moves over to Gray, just keeps winning. You know, and, you know, I'm going to get a chance to watch them play tomorrow night um, at their brand-new field um, down there at, at Gray Collegiate. So, he, he's a phenomenal coach. They got really good players, and they're well-coached, and they just keep winning. So, they're kind of a team that's uh, you feel like I don't care who's on their roster. They feel like as long as Coach Assey's at home, they're always going to be in our Power 25 because it doesn't matter what kind of classification they're going to be in. I know they're going to be moving and shaking in the next couple of years. They're just going to win. So I'm going to watch. We're going to be able to get a chance to see them tomorrow, um, watch them play some baseball, but a, a very talented group, of the, obviously uh, one of the best coaches in the state. So we'll get a chance to watch them go at it. Coach, you moved to 15. They were previously not ranked. We mm, caught flags before jump. with this team. Um, but they've made a humongous jump for winning the Coastal Invitational Tournament. Blake really liked this team. Fort Mill the Jackets are in the Power 25 in the 5A classification as well. Big statement to begin the year. Beating North huge, Myrtle, nonetheless. Huge statement. Yeah, huge statement. Beating one of the, the best 4A teams, you know, and in, in not only, you know, in the Southeast. state, but in the Southeast. That's what I was going to say, in the region. In there, and obviously, you know, a talented group, and and kind of that area we were talking about earlier with with NAFO in that area up there, the, that the very talented part of the state. So they're a good group. And and two years ago, 
state championship playing for it, you know, in that area. So they they made a run into it. Um, very talented players. They got some. They got a, a good mix of some some older guys and younger guys. And you know, maybe did we overlook them? Maybe we didn't. I don't know. We're about to find out. But off they're to here a now. high start. They're here now. And 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 like you said, a very talented tournament they played in and made a big jump and and beat a very talented team to win a win a invitational to start off the year. Big time. Big time. Big time. Um, number fourteen here might oh, wait, co- make co- us let's look. Just go ahead and- Let's go ahead and pat ourselves on the back. Pat ourselves on the back here for number we don't 14. Get many of these. <laughs> they're they're up one spot. Um, coach, I, I can't even keep up with them anymore. They're seven and oh. We'll just go ahead and tell you they're the number one ranked two A team in the state. Um at seven and oh. They continue to win and they're playing pretty good competition as well. No doubt. I mean, they uh, we talked about a couple of these guys, they get a couple one two punches on the mound, right? I mean, and then you get you know, you got Brandon. A- Bradley Anderson, you know, a former future gamer, you know, is going to have a chance to be on there to beat anybody in the state on the mound. Uh, you know, former future gamer lit it up there for us and then came back to the preseason all state and lit it up again and improved from there. So they got an athletic lineup. I got a chance to watch them at the very end of the year in the playoffs. And they were a young group. You know, we saw them. They were in the the PBR show to shipyard showdown last year. And we kind of saw those guys, they were in a weird transition. They didn't have yes. a coach at that time and they made a run in the playoffs. So you kind of, you kind of saw the kind of players in the team and the athletic athleticism they were, and you kind of put that together and then you get a full-time baseball coach kind of taking it over. Boom. Here you go. So it's fun to watch those guys kind of see where they're at right now. And you, you kind of hope they continue for their sake and, and keep having that good year. But Fox Creek off to a hot start. Here we go, rolling. Don't Watch say we out. didn't. We we told you so. We told you so. Um, now this one uh, going to thirteen. Yeah, we might catch y'all for this one. We'll, we'll um, catch a little bit of flack right here, boy. Um, they're down from number six um, now, and that is the Blue Ridge Fighting Tigers, Austin Smith's favorite team in the favorite team uh, entire ever. country. Um, they. We don't want to say they struggled. Um, they're seven and four, but played tough competition, but lost some games early. Um, so I think that that kind of warrants that that fall down as you as we'll get into the top twelve here. But still a very talented team. Extremely talented team, right? They got they got division one commits, division two commits, all you know, littered across their their lineup and, and future college commits, you know, on their roster. But you know, kind of the one thing that, you know, plays into this role as we start to roll into these power 25s as you start to get into this is win-loss. You know, it it, there, it plays a part, right? There's there's a point where, you know, when you've played as many games as they've had now, you can't go, ah, it's one week. You know, it, it, that, that kind of starts to go in there. But we it's not one of those where we're going to go, we're going to drop them out. Yeah, they had a little bit of a drop, but all of a sudden in two weeks they, they turn it around and that – they're back up at the top. So we know how good they are. They made a run last year. We know they're going to be up there the when it's all – they're going to be back fighting for it again when it's all said and done. So we know how talented of a group that is. We know how great of a coach they got up there Blue Blue Ridge. So we know it's going to shake out for them in the end. But, you know, sometimes you got to you got to take a step back before you can go forward. So here we go. It's like, it's like fertilizer. Yeah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> We got to stop before we get in trouble here. Uh, anyway, moving on to number 12 here. Um, Dorman, coach, who you've coach. seen, still talented. Yes, very talented. I mean, I, they offensively, kind of talk about them offensively. They got, they got a very talented group. I mean, Mitch Wilson, as much power in the bat, I guess, there might be in the state, you know, outside of maybe uh, – one or two guys that we'll get to here in a little bit, but, you know, but they also got some other guys sprinkled across the the middle infield that have played for two, three years that are extremely talented, but they also got obviously the superstar freshman and Connor Wells on the mound and they're taking slow getting in there, but they got some older guys sprinkled in. They got guys that have got experience. Coach Jolly was, was very optimistic going into this year. Now he was very, I don't know the right word we want to talk about, but he was very disheartened. I I don't know. He was upset about how the season went last year, but he was very optimistic going into this year 
with the group he had coming back and the start that they've been off to and the fight that they've showed. And, and they played in very tough competition, but they're, they're a very talented offensive team that has kind of done it in a couple different ways. They've won games doing the small ball, and they can sit there and also out slug you. So they're they're a fun team to watch, especially offensively. And they got some different pieces, lefties and righties on the mound that that can that can mess you up. Coach. Watch out be now. A big, big year for the Cavaliers. We'll see. Whew. Only um, time will tell. Only time will tell. They're, <clears throat> they are they're down from, from 10. Uh, but you know, they've had some teams kind of kind of move up here. Um, and a team that has fallen a little bit from <clears throat> five to eleven. Um, and they're three and two, West Ashley. We still obviously know they're good. They ran into kind of some buzz saws early in the season, um, but still have the ability to make a, a huge statement this year. Ability, yeah. West Ashley's that you know they're kind of a little bit like like Blue Ridge, right? They're they're uber talented. Um, they got another team that's got college commitments littered all over the roster. They got a new coach and staff um this year and and it's kind of they're going to take some probably some lumps you know early on in the year just because there's you know that new staff trying to figure it out but i'll tell you one thing getting into region play with that that pitching staff i i don't i don't know how excited i'd be trying to trying to beat those guys two out of three Oof. you know with those guys or you get in you get them in the playoffs trying to meet those and oh by the way they you know they got their best arm strength guy sitting there as their third guy you know, so you sit there and, they, you know, they got Matty Brown leading off. And, you know, I, I don't know. It, it's a very talented team. And, you know, yeah, they played a tough schedule early on. And, and some guys that are, you know, some experienced coaches and experienced teams they played. But West Ashley is a very talented team that you you know is going to be in the mix when it's all said and done there at the end for those guys. That, that low country is looking pretty good. Um, as you move to, to 10 here, Coach, obviously we've seen number 10 – um, very early in the year, impressed. Um, we ranked them high to start out with, and they've made that jump. They've went up one, but they're in the top ten. Hand hand Skyhawks, um, coach. They're up to ten. Big week. They've made it to the Shipyard um, Showdown Championships against a good James Island team. But impressed early with pitching, hitting everywhere. Yeah, they're uh, they they kind of got it all. I mean, it's a it's a very talented team. Uh, they kind of got some superstars. They got some role players. Uh, they got that toughness, though. They got they got that uh, they got that fight you about you. So they, you know, it'd be interesting to see them play. You know, that James Island team maybe like day one <laughs> of that yeah. tournament. You know, not day four, game four of that thing. But you know, it kind of shook out that way. I know they still had another arm left, but. You know, it, it's a very talented team that that I I'll tell you in, in their classification. I don't think I'd really be too excited to play, but you know, outside of the talent, you throw that way. It, it's a it's a tough group. It's a tough team that that'll fight you and, and get down to business. And and I can see why why they did what they did last year. And they they pretty much return everybody, and they got ultimately the the coolest story of a uh, of really anybody in high school baseball with a young man returning back from all his brain surgeries last year. So it's uh. It's the coolest thing in the world. So you know they're going to make a make a deep run this year, and they're at ten. And I don't. They're that team. But you put them another one. You put them in any classification, they'd be up there at the top. Well, they end up being that that top ranked three A team in the state in the Power Twenty Five. Um, Coach, we've we've got a, a big mover here, um, and I've I've messed it up, honestly. Um, <laughs> on my scrolls here. Um, because I wasn't ready for it. Anyway, well, no, we ain't got to the big mover yet. I apologize, guys. We have not got to the big mover. Yeah. But this is somewhat of a big mover from 12 to 9. Lawrence with a huge week at the IP Classic, making it to the championship. Now, are we surprised by those guys? Not really. We kind of knew what they had, but still it's the way they performed down at the IP. Yeah, obviously talented team with, you know, uh, you know, Asher leading the storm and making the big jumps and making the, you know, the the moves in the right direction for him. And and we know they got, you know, they've kind of had some talent. They've had some pieces and it seems like they're putting it together and, you know, rumors out there, maybe this is going to be kind of their year. So it'll, it'll be interesting to see how it plays out for them. And, you know, there's a couple of people talking about this might be 
might be one of the better teams in the state. So we'll we'll see. Yeah. You know, we, we ain't trying to jinx nobody, but let's uh let's see. So it'll be it'll be fun to see what, what, what Lawrence has. But they got some talented players, and I don't know, maybe a couple more PBSC bomb squads coming out of that group. Coach, they might be in the <clears throat> the hardest. I don't want to say hardest. <laughs> Second, we'll, we'll say one of the one hardest of the classifications top. in the state because that is a top heavy classification. Oof. But as we roll into the, the top 10 here, you'll see mm. where that classification stands. Um, moving to number seven, I'm sorry, I'm skipping ahead. Moving to eight Lord. here. Um, eight is a big jumper from 18 to eight. It is the fighting hooks and levers of Lexington. <laughs> number eight, big week. Um, at the Aptera, the champs. The, the cha- I mean, what are we? I, you know, the, the only not, I mean, you know, we're about to knock him back down because Coach Lever claimed he was going to get us some Lexington Wildcat. Gear, I ain't seen anything and, yet. And I, I ain't seen anything yet myself either. And I was actually at the game. I did get a, a heck of a barbecue sandwich from their uh, hospitality suite in an award in an award winning cupcake. I don't know who made it, did. but it was top of the line. But yeah, I mean, the Wildcats, man, that, Coach Huck's big shock. Again, we've talked about a lot of these guys. One of, one of the greatest coaches, or, you know, in high school baseball here, he's done nothing but win, and he's back at it again, right? Another kind of – he's brought some pieces back, but he's got two freshmen playing in that lineup. A couple junior future guys, you know, but he's got a couple freshmen mixed in that lineup, right? And they go into the Optera, very talented tournament, and boom, win, right? He's got a couple older pieces mixed in there, you know, Coach Lever, we joke about him. He got one of the best pitching coaches in in South Carolina over there calling some pitches for him. <laughs> you know, we'll see about that of, this summer. And, and one of the best blast uh, baseball uh, guys out there. So big shot, Coach Huck's got him rolling in there. Um, you know, and they can kind of do it multiple ways, right? It, you know, stealing bases, the bunt game, the small ball game. You know, have a few guys that can kind of leave the yard. So it's a different roster than you've seen in the past because they've, you know, in the past they've had a bunch of those old guys that have played for, you know, two, three years in a row. So they got a bunch of new guys running around. But I'll tell you one thing that ain't new, them winning. So congrats to those guys. They keep doing it. So it'll be fun to see how they keep rolling here. <clears throat> Big time. Um, Big time. I think they start off – don't they don't, – do they have a River Bluff again here soon? Is that – they must. I, 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 they've I, always. I always feel like they start off with River Bluff, or do they finally get a break? It's a tough from way that? to start off. God, um, yeah. if they do. Jesus. Um, number seven here. They move up from number nine. We <clears> talk <throat> about arm strength. They roll them out like horses here <laughs> with JL man. Um, <laughs> so, so it's like the uh, Clydesdales. Um, we <laughs> very good horses representing a really good company. Um, Number seven, jail man. Um, coach, we saw I saw him in the Palmetto Classic. They <clears throat> Siffrey comes in, Luke Jones comes in. Oh. There's two 90 arms. They bring Howard in, they bring um Bryce Harder in. It's just no break for anybody. They win the Palmetto Classic, beating a good crescent team, and that's why they're making the move up now. They can improve hitting, obviously, but you can win one nothing. Yeah, go look at our heat sheet. I mean, look how many jail they're all over it. I mean, it, it's impressive. I mean, it, it's you know, I, I it's hard, it's hard to, it's hard to speak upon what they got going out there. We kind of joked about it last time on our podcast. It's almost like they got more arm strength. I'm not saying just because you got the arm strength means you're going to be a great pitching staff, but they got more arm strength than a lot of than a lot of college Mid majors. Do. <laughs> you know, there's it really is, and 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 not only that, they got guys with with some breaking balls. You know, they got guys that. And they got guys with with big league ish type bodies in there as well, and you know it, it's impressive. It, it's I don't know what they got going on in the water up there, but something's floating around in there. So, you know, the one thing I I, I won't say too much of a joke on it, but Austin got a text from somebody, and we were joking about what's in the water. They said HGH. So <laughs> <laughs> watch out, um, the Winsky's not watching this. Um. <laughs> Winsky, I'll tell you one thing: he ain't watching this. <laughs> Um, moving to six here. Um, now they're down from eight. Um, River Bluff. Um, they did make it to that uh, Optera championship. I um, lost to Lexington, but still a very talented team. Um, I'm sorry. 
Yes. Yes. What am I yeah. doing? I'm lost. You're yes. Okay. What's my in rankings your water? are all like everywhere. I don't know what's in my what's water. In, what's in your water? Um. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I. I remember well. Big shock. Coach Bonnet got another good team. Yeah. Obviously got Bo Hollins. You know they hit the transfer portal <laughs> this year as well. You know got a very talented left hand. You know the, River Bluff can really pitch it. Right. You kind of go look at their scores. They. They can really pitch it. They're going to kind of they're they're going to figure out some things offensively. Kind of got some young guys in there. You know, they're another team a little bit like Lexington, where you look at their lineup from last year to this year, it's brand new. It's even more so for for them than than last year. They had a bunch of guys that had played for a long time, but they returned they returned some arms and they returned some good arms. So that's kind of been able to keep them in there. And I guess if there's one thing you're going to really return. There's some superstar arms, and they always got, you know, they got the one guy, big Bo Hollins, right there in the middle of their lineup. So that's one thing they can always, they can always uh, account for in the middle of the lineup. So River Bluff, a very talented team, that's going to find some ways to scratch and claw and get that offense going. And if they do, watch out, they're going to be, they're going to be in the mix when it's all said and done. Coach, we we moved to five, and and it's your favorite team of all time. They've fallen from number three. Um, Coach. It, okay. it was it was a tough week at the IP. They played some of the best teams in the state, um, but obviously, arm strength, talent, it's still there. Coach, you can't win them all. You know, you can't. You, you can't, can't. You can't. I mean, you can, but um, <laughs> you usually don't. Uh, yeah, I mean, Hannah, they're gonna they're gonna deal. You know, Hannah's gonna figure it out. I mean, they got arguably the best, one of the best players in the country in Craddock. Um, you know, they got Seth Manning on the mound. I mean, they got Jackson Robinson. I mean, they if you're a Gamecock fan, you're really excited about their team coming in. Um, if you're a Clemson fan, you're probably mad that you got kids from right there that are not coming to you. But either way, they got a very talented um, – and, you know, Brady Thomas is uh, – I got a Easton Thomas, who Gamecock great. Brady Thomas, who played for us in South Carolina, is – Got a family member, Easton Thomas, over there. So I got a, a little bond there with that family over there. But T.L. Hannah is going to figure it out. They got a very talented team. And like you said, they had a, uh, a tough start. But you know what? They're good enough. They'll be there. And I'll still, you know, in our betting lines, I'll still throw some money down on those guys. Am I allowed to say that? Uh, yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> um, in the year. Um, number four, I think, has, uh, I wouldn't say surprised us all. Um, but has has shown a lot of ability, talent early in the year. We kind of knew it was their young team um, that's going to be really good in a year, but they're still really good right now in James Island, Coach. The Shipyard Showdown champs. Yeah. I mean, talk about it. I mean, it's always been a joke, right? The oh, team looks good coming off. But, I mean, these guys look like a college team coming on the field. I mean, they were all big and strong and athletic. Look good in a the uniform. They can all run. I mean, they would get on base and they'd all steal every base. It didn't matter who it was. I mean, one through nine, they can all run. You know, Stowe Rogers would get on base. He'd steal second. He'd steal third. Then they pinch run for him. You know, they they do. You know, they get the catcher, bring him in, move him out. You know, everybody was running. You know, and then they bring. You know, the, the question was, can they pitch? I don't know. Everybody's like, I don't know if they can pitch. They can pitch. I, I think if them no runs down there. You know, the one game they, they didn't win, it was tied. What was it? Like, what did they tie? It was one to one or whatever it was. Like, oh, oh, they, oh, oh, oh. Yeah, zero to zero. They didn't even give him a run, right? Like, they didn't even lose. So, like, you know, oh, by the way, Mershon comes off short. He was up to 87 the one day, comes back in and relieves the next time he's up to 89, right? I mean, like, oh, no worries. Yeah, it's an impressive team. I, James Allen is, is, they're as good as they get, especially, especially offensively. You know, Kyle Stock was impressive twice for those guys on the mound down there. Um, you know, we'll see how it shakes out as the year goes on, but it, it's going to be hard to stop that team because they can do so many different things offensively. And I now know Austin is fully on the bandwagon as as he was able to get a hoodie um, from Coach down there. So I, we're a little upset that we've been on the bandwagon before him. Um, that yeah, we, we didn't get, get probably the coolest hoodie in the state. Um, Unless someone else has one, we'll send you our that's, addresses. That's cooler than than uh, than the island. So, coach, the, the question mark was the arms for James Howard, and they answered. They answered the bell. <clears throat> Boy, did they answer it! 
so it could be a very dangerous team um, as we move on. And they're going to have to probably eventually <laughs> face this team here um, <laughs> in North Myrtle Beach. Um, down at Coastal Invitational, obviously they have arm strength as well. And as, as you, Blake was down there, they got rope, um, and they just rolled out mid to upper 80s arms after him. Yeah. And, and and we got a we've got a great catcher back there to catch him. Yeah, I mean, no worries. I, it's 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 impressive. Yeah, it's those two teams to see who kind of battles it out to shake out of that, that for the lower state is gonna uh, that's gonna be well. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. If it gets to that point, it's gonna be very impressive. But North Myrtle Beach, big shock again, back for year two, one of the more talented teams on the mound with depth. Right, and there's. There's some of these teams that got one or two guys. It's, it's a very deep, very talented team on the mound, but also positionally. Um, it's got guys, you know, up and down that lineup, one through nine, that can do multiple different things. Superstar guys, you know, team guys that can kind of handle the bat and kind of help you help them win different ways. So it's uh, it'll be it'll be fun to watch how those guys kind of shake it out and see where they go. But we know one thing that's going to keep them in the game: those those front line arms. It'll be dangerous. That was my pick. Um, here we go. Here we go, Coach. <laughs> Moving. If, if you paid attention to the Twitter page, you probably already know the top two by now. Um, but according to the national rankings, coming in at number two, Somerville Green Wave. Um, they they were two and two, I believe. IP, I think somewhere in there, about two, two at the IP. Um, so not the ideal start um, that the Green Wave wanted, but they did get in the win column. Obviously, still one of the most talented teams in the Southeast, if not no the doubt. country. Yeah, and and one of these, right? This is this is one of those like we we've talked about before with like our player rankings. This isn't as much as like oh they dropped. This is as much as the other team kind of raised up. <laughs> you know, obviously Somerville's is as talented as they come. Um, you know some things out there got them like ranked like really high. Obviously they have one of the greatest players in the country with PJ Morlando. They have one of the biggest arms with Messina on the team. They got arm strength galore across their team. They got, they got superstar players. They got guys that are probably their fourth, fifth starter on the mound. That would be teams number one and two. Um, and, and again, coach Manis is brand new to them. You know, obviously he was there all fall, you know, the preseason. But still, you're it's a new coach with a new team and a new program. They're going to have some bumps in the road. And and obviously, every time Somerville shows up somewhere, they're going to get somebody's best effort, right? It's almost like you're going to face yeah. the New York Yankees, right? So Somerville, you know, uh, not the start they probably wanted. They also probably don't care because they want to be somewhere else at the very end of it. But, you know, they, they, they were able to – you know, weather the storm a little bit and, and got back in the wind column and got it rolling. So, obviously, a very talented team. But the team that jumped them also beat them. So, watch out now. Coach, watch out. The number one team, they are they are new to the number one rank, never been ranked number one. Tower Ridge Copperheads <laughs> up at number one. We knew they were good last year. We had them at two this year. Some real – a little more talented. But, obviously, when they went on the field – Copperhead showed who had the who could play better. Um, and Catawba Ridge undefeated on the year wins the IP, which is a huge tournament down there uh, with a lot of talent. Took down a good Lawrence team in the championship, up to number one. Talent off the charts. Talent off the charts, and right they got a they got a superstar ace, Caden Glauber, committed to North Carolina. That every time out seems to get better and better and better, right? I, I think last year I saw him at the Optera and he was like up to like 87 or 88. This year, Blake sees him down there at the IP is up to 93, right? And and he's still just a young buck, right? Still just a, a, a sophomore, right? <laughs> yeah, the sky's the limit for him. I, I got a text from a, a, a coach last week. I guess his line, he was like five innings with 12 Ks, right? He just doesn't give up anything. It's very hard to hit, you know, but you throw him off, right? They got more guys just like him coming through there, right? Oh, oh, Jackson Mullen, you know, we forget about him. Committed to the College of Charleston. You got Peyton Dean, VMI. Oh, and then you got all these – you got these offensive guys that are going around. You know, you got Samuel Schwab behind the plate that throws like 
like heat seeking missiles behind the plate down to second base. So it's just guy after guy. And on top of that, they just win, right? Coach Stoss up there does a tremendous job. State champion last year, right? Uh, everything's lined up, knock on wood for those guys. They stay healthy. Everything's lined up for those guys to be back in the mix. But, right, we've just talked about two teams right there not far behind them that are, that are in that. that well, they can have a, a, an IP gonna... championship rematch for the upper yeah, championship. No doubt. Or Yeah, so you, you don't know what's going to – shake out there so it'll be a it'll be a little battle there but obviously a very talented team that now knows how to win <clears throat> that has been there done that so it'll be fun to watch and and we'll be there this spring well before that state championship to watch those guys play or playoffs to watch them play so it uh you know i, I joked with uh our national guys when when we got them it when when the this last national rankings got in there and they were talking about they were going to put them ahead of somerville i go we tried to get them in there the time before, you know. But, <laughs> but hey, sometimes little old South Carolina just gets overlooked a little bit. But you know, it's okay. Not even more after that. Heat Not even more, baby. Uh, <laughs> hey, she's fire, boy. We're in the top five nationally for mm-hmm. average uh, fastball velocity seen at this point in the year. Um, Mr. Stewart's in the top three scouts nationally. Uh, <laughs> your your season's over with. I'm done. I'm not going back out. See you later. Um, Hey, that'll that'll wrap us up for the Power Twenty Five. We'll we'll reevaluate two to three weeks down the road here um, as as more of that region play kicks in. Um, now classification ranks will be coming out, right, Coach? Yeah, we'll get those rolling. We'll four uh, A and five A. We'll get out tomorrow. Three <clears throat> A and two A. We'll get out on Tuesday. One A and Skiza. We'll get out on Wednesday. So right, obviously a lot of a lot of content, a lot of stuff still floating, rolling around. So it uh, it don't stop, can't stop, won't stop. You know what I mean? Can't stop, never stop. Um, for for prep baseball, South Carolina. Um, so coach, we'll we'll throw this tidbit. Three hundred and sixty-two viewers on the live. (laughs) What we got going on, (laughs) guys? John Smith was 360 of them. Um, he, he logged in and logged back out 360 times. <laughs> Sean Smith is so mad he's not on this right now. He would have loved this. Yes. He Sean would have, would have been this. fired up rolling Austin, in right now. Austin misses the first podcast live. Um, but we will do it all again on Sunday um, as we recap. Coach, five, if not more games, if Blake is out at any um, this week. A lot of games. Wow. Five um, games, get it rolling. I've got three. You've got two. We're on the road. Um, we're, we're working on some some camera content uh, activities. Um, bear with us on that as we look to upgrade um, multimedia content for South Carolina. Um, Coach, so I've got got anything else to add? No, just hey, hey, if we're if we're listening, if we're coaches, if you're players, right? Like you said earlier. Those nominations, get them rolling. We want to, we want to pump you guys up there every week, <clears throat> Monday at noon. We'll, we'll get it out there. We'll, we'll, we'll try to remind you guys as much as we can. We, we get it. Coaches are busy. We, we understand there's a lot going on, but we'll, we'll start pumping it out at the end of each week, um, to with the reminders. And uh, you know, I know emails get lost in the shuffle. I, I miss some of those as well, but we'll get them going out there. Hey, and if they're, you know, that heat sheet too that we're going to get out there every Thursday. If there's somebody that you're going, hey, Billy Bob's throwing 98 miles an hour, let us know. We'll we'll come <laughs> yeah. out there and watch it. But hey, that heat sheet, it's got to be it's it's us with our stalker radar guns. We are there in attendance with our stalker radar guns, not not with the uh, pocket radar from an angle off to the side that's that's not accurate. It's it's we we're validating it with ourselves with the stalker radar guns. So, but if you guys Say there's somebody we need to get out there and see. We'll shoot us an email, shoot us a DM, let us know. We'll get out there and see it. Um, we want to make sure we, we we see all the best players. We see all the players, as many as we can out there in the state, and try to help promote them and promote the best we can. Coach said it best. Um, so we'll wrap this thing up with 367 fo- or viewers. Um, so from all of us here at Prep Baseball South Carolina, we hope you have a great week.